now we can do something. So that's why I do acrylic underneath. Uh, it dries fast, that's why I do oil on top, because oil is pretty. <laughs> and you know what, only you oil painters know what I'm talking about. And some of you who are acrylic painters because you're afraid of oils, oh my goodness. Listen, I teach people all the time, and I, I, one of the myths that I'm trying to eliminate from the from the emerging art world is that acrylics are easy. Nope, nope, nope. Oils are the easiest medium on the planet. Uh, not uh, give a tip your hat to Jan Van Eyck in what 1490 something when he is credited with being the, the inventor of oil painting, and uh, he invented it, and it's been around for 500 years. Why? Because it be easy. It's the friendliest medium that there is. Okay, now I'm done with my oil glaze, and I've got these wonderful long hand. I love these brushes. I forget now who they're made by. They're Jewel, but I'm not sure that's the maker. Oh, I want to, here, this is a repeat. I wanted to show you that little wiggle. See that right there? What in the world is that? That, that, that was slow down motion there. I don't know what that is, but it happens frequently throughout my painting process. It's sort of like this just spasmodic uh, little seizure that my brain has or my, my hands have. It feels like it's in my hands. My brain doesn't plan it. And uh, you know what? I let it go. I let it happen. In fact, I encourage my hands. Yeah, his hands have that little seizure thing because it usually results in really nice lines. That's really important for some of you to see. Some of you who are, are wannabe painters, wannabe artists, you think that good artwork, a lot of you, comes from controlling the dang brush. Now, boring painting comes from controlling the brush. Let the, the brush is smarter than you are. Let it have its freedom. Let it have its way. Let the, make sure that the lines that you make are interesting. Oh man, I could talk. There you go. Here's a close-up of the lines that I've just made. And, uh, I'm going to say this right now for the first time, and if anybody's keeping score, this would be a good thing for you to count. How many times during this video am I going to say this? The essence of beautiful painting is the art of making interesting marks. Did you get it? Okay, there's once. I'm going to say it again right now. The essence, the sin qua non, without which nothing. You ain't got this, you ain't got nothing. The sin qua non, the, the essence of beautiful painting is the art of making interesting marks. Now, a lot of you beginners, you think the art, the, the essence of beautiful painting is drawing the dang thing, whatever it is. Like right now I'm doing a Capitol building and you'd be happy if you could just render it. Well, let me, st let me try to point you in the right direction. Good painting does not consist in the ability to render, to draw. Now it's really, really, really important and nice to be able to draw. But just because you can draw something doesn't mean you're creating anything of transcendent uh, whatever, beauty, uh, uh, something that will reach out and grab people's souls. Just because you can draw the thing doesn't really give you any credit. You don't start getting artistic credit until you're doing something to the drawing, with the drawing. And that something is interesting marks. That's the main thing. Now I've, I've mixed up, same two brushes, I've mixed up uh, a darker purple color so that I can still make lines down here in the lower part of the painting and they will show up. You'll notice, please notice, especially you students, notice the way I'm holding my brushes. First of all, I'm not holding them like a third grade kid trying to get an A in penmanship. Do you understand? The penmanship grip, or what I call the death control grip. The only time I hold my brush in that control penmanship grip is when I'm signing my signature at the end. The entire rest of the painting process, I'm holding my brush in all kinds of ways anyway, except that control grip. Why? Uh, because when you go for control, you lose transcendence. Uh, that's the best way I can put it right now. You know what? And and if you go to my website, dannelsonart.com, and look at, look at some of my my earlier artwork. For, for 30 years I was a full-time illustrator and most of my work was realistic. Look at that work and compare it to what I do now. I want to tell you that realism is easy. Re I, mean, re I mean, sure, some of you need to learn the skills of drawing. Please, you know, check out my video learning the art of becoming an artist because I, I spend a good portion of that video teaching how to see 
which is the key for learning how to draw. Uh, but drawing is not the without which nothing, is not the sin qua non of good painting. Drawing is a good tool, an important tool, very important tool. But you know what? You don't have to be a crackerjack, super, super drawer to be a super painter. That should be encouraging to some of you. I mean, I would point to Vincent Van Gogh, who I love his artwork, I love his story. Uh, I look forward to shaking his hand someday. <laughs> Fa fabulous, fabulous human being. Tragic, of course, and a fabulous painter. And he was a decent drawer, but he didn't use extreme drawing skills to get his point across. He used the art of making interesting marks. So what you see me doing here, and again, this is not slow motion, this is not fast motion, this is just the real time. What you see me doing here is struggling with every stroke to make it interesting. I think so many painting students, uh, they don't really know what to do with the paint that's on their brush before it hits the canvas. So they put the brush on the canvas and then they begin to wiggle. In fact, they begin to swoosh back and forth like a windshield wiper, you know, <laughs> hoping something will happen. Well, the only thing you're going to get is boring, predictable, repetitive marks. Uh, impressionistic painting is so much more difficult than realism. Realism is you just copy the dang thing. Impressionism, you have to think about every single stroke. And yeah, it's hard mental work. Every stroke has to be interesting. Here's a, here's a quotable quote that I, that I like to make. <laughs> Who am I quoting? Oh, me, of course. <laughs> okay, so I shouldn't call it a quote. Here's one of the things I like to say when I'm teaching, is that if your goal is to create a beautiful painting, why in the world, at any point in the painting, painting process, why in the world would you make ugly, uh, and I like to say that ugly, <laughs> why would you make ugly marks on the way to making a beautiful painting? That's one of the other beefs that I have with the concept of blocking in a painting, because most people when they block in a painting, their their attitude is, well, none of this is really going to show on the final product, so it doesn't matter if it's kind of ugly, I'm just blocking in. That's stupid. I'm sorry. That That's just dumb. Uh, don't make ugly marks. Every mark you make, every mark you make, and here's a, here's a way to measure that. That that's my goal. I don't always reach it, but that's my goal. Here's a way to measure it. If you st if, if if you died, if I died <laughs> at any point, it hasn't happened yet. I'm glad to report. But if I died at any point in the painting process, just keeled over, and the canvas was left the way I left it, would it be a good painting? Huh? If the answer is yes then I'm doing the right thing. See, look at this right now. That's, that's really a, quite a fetching painting in its current state. That's my goal. If I keeled over at any minute of the painting process, I would leave a good painting. <laughs> I really hope not to keel over, you know, real soon, but <laughs> that's still my goal. So every mark should be interesting. People will often walk up because I do. I do a lot of architectural paintings. I paint downtown and in towns and cities. I paint downtown Raleigh a lot, and uh, so I'm always. I've always got an audience, which I love. It's great fun. I like. I'm one of those artists. A little bit. I've got to screw loose because I like an audience. But they'll come up to me and say, "Wow, did you draw that freehand?" <laughs> and they'll say, "Look at all those straight lines." And if I'm being really nice, I'll I'll just nod and smile. <laughs> If I'm being a little snarky, hey, I, I just turned 60 a couple weeks ago. I feel like I've earned the right to tell people the truth. <laughs> um, but if I if I'm if I want to tell them the truth, I say, show me one straight line. Like here, okay, here's a close up. Show me one straight line in this painting. There's not a single one. But what I do render is the impression. Okay, there's the end of layer number five or six. I've, I've lost count. But that's the end. Now, the, the next stage is I sort of, I, I've got the lines basically where I want them. I'm going to come back now and do what is called, what artists, what art professors call local color. It's what ordinary people call realistic color. The color, the dome, this, the dome of this building is green, so I'm painting it green. So I want to get a little bit of local color in, pl in place. So it's a little bit like coloring in a coloring book, except that, you see that right there?